You guys, another election-related lawsuit. A federal district judge in Pennsylvania dismissed a lawsuit by the Trump campaign on Saturday. And the Trump campaign is appealing this to the Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. Hi, my name is Wes Austin. I'm a lawyer and comedian, and I like to provide updates on the election-related lawsuits. Well, I'm not even going to lie. That's just what I'm doing. I'm going to try to keep this one a little bit shorter because it's the Dancing with the Stars finale, and I am missing it. Okay? I'm just going to give you the details. We have a lawsuit in Pennsylvania. Three plaintiffs, all right? I'm going to throw it up on the screen somewhere, but you've got three plaintiffs. Donald Trump. Lawrence Roberts and David John Henry, okay? Three plaintiffs. Defendants, Kathy Bookbar, Secretary of State, and a whole bunch of County Board of Elections in Pennsylvania. All right. First, I think it's important to note what causes of action we are actually talking about. So just a really quick history on this. So in the original complaint that was filed, there were seven causes of action, okay? We had two equal protection claims, two due process claims, and three claims under the electors and election clauses. All right, that comes to a total of seven. Then what happened was we had a decision that came out from the Third Circuit Court of Appeals, and I think that influenced the Trump campaign and plaintiffs to amend their complaint. And in the first amended complaint, they actually got rid of five of the seven causes of action so there were two causes of action left in the first amended complaint all right we had the equal protection claims and the electors and election clauses claims okay now based on that new opinion that came out from the third circuit you guys don't want the westlaw site do you are you psychopaths you don't want it all right 2020 wl 6686120 for you nut jobs who want to look this up so the plaintiffs, under this new decision, they basically conceded that they didn't have standing for that second cause of action, which is the electors and election clauses cause of action. So the district court just dismissed that right out of the gate. The judge's real problem here seemed to be that he thought the remedy that was being sought by uh, Trump and the other plaintiffs was re just really mismatched from what the injury actually was because the, the remedy they were seeking was that we don't want Pennsylvania to certify their voting results. And the injury was that basically they had these two plaintiffs who didn't have their votes counted. So that just seemed like a mismatch to the judge in his opinion. I think that's why, that's what he was really focusing on if you read between the lines. But anyway, let's get into this uh, opinion now and just kind of carefully go through it. So the Secretary of State in Pennsylvania allowed a notice and cure provision where uh, people who had their mail-in ballots, if there was a problem with them, uh, they allowed them to cure the problem with the ballots. Uh, and the issue came up because you had different counties uh, doing it differently. Um, some counties allowed people to cure their mail-in ballots while other counties did not. So you had some kind of more pro-Trump counties where they weren't allowed to cure their ballots, at least that's what was alleged in the uh, first amended complaint, where, and then you had some more pro-Biden counties where people were allowed to cure their ballots uh, with issues. And the two plaintiffs, actually, um, that I mentioned earlier, they both had submitted mail-in ballots, and I think their ballots were discounted, not counted, because they had problems with them, and they weren't given the opportunity to fix the ballots. But the judge had a problem with them, with their remedy, where he said the injury was, was basically that you didn't get a vote, and the remedy that you're seeking is you don't want the state to certify their voting results. And here's a quote from the opinion. Prohibiting certification of the election results would not reinstate the individual plaintiff's right to vote. It would simply deny more than 6.8 million Pennsylvanians their right to vote. So the problem is that we had mail-in voters in Biden-friendly areas. They were allowed to fix their ballots, to cure their ballots, whereas we had mail-in voters from uh, Trump-friendly areas, and they were not allowed to cure their ballots. Now, the judge said this was not a violation of the Equal Protection Clause because the Secretary of State, uh, Kathy Bookvar, she did not direct them to treat to 
to do these things differently in different counties. She had just said generally, you can you can have this notice and cure uh, procedure, and then these individual counties just decided to do things differently. So they said oh, she didn't she didn't cause a problem by treating areas differently. This just happened. And so the judge, his his problem really, I think, was that. Wouldn't the remedy just be to count their votes instead of invalidating all of these other votes? By not certifying, you'd basically be not letting all these other votes count. Here's a quote from the judge. Plaintiffs seek to remedy the denial of their votes by invalidating the votes of millions of others rather than requesting that their votes be counted. They seek to discredit scores of other votes, but only for one race, the presidential race, not the other contests down ballot. This is simply not how the Constitution works. And then the judge went on talking about Trump. He said that Trump actually didn't have standing to sue. He specifically rejected the campaign's two equal protection arguments. Uh, the first one was that poll watchers were discriminately excluded from observing the canvas. And the second one um, was the opportunity for voters to cure defective ballots were deliberately done in counties the state knew to favor Biden. So these were the two equal protection arguments that uh, Donald Trump was making. So as far as the first argument goes about the poll watchers, uh, about the poll watchers being discriminatorily excluded from observing the canvas, the judge basically said, um, looking at the evidence, all of the poll watchers uh, were kind of prevented from being too close. So they didn't treat the your poll watchers any differently than they did the Biden poll watchers. They were all treated equally bad, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, they say here, none of these allegations claim that the Trump campaign watchers were treated differently than the Biden campaign watchers. So I guess the fact that none of them had great access uh, made this so that that wasn't a valid equal protection claim. And then the second equal protection argument from President Trump um, that the opportunities for voters to cure their defective ballots were deliberately done in some counties versus other counties where they weren't done. Again, the court said, hey, the Secretary of State just said that all of these counties could do it and she had no, she didn't direct them to treat different counties differently. She just let them do whatever they wanted and I guess some did and some didn't. So again, that's not an equal protection problem based on what the judge says because they weren't specifically treating pro-Trump counties differently than pro-Biden counties. The Secretary of State wasn't causing these to be treated differently. The judge is basically just saying, it just happened that way. So it's not an equal protection problem. So the district judge granted the motion to dismiss. So he dismissed these claims with prejudice, meaning they can't try to fix them and bring them again. Now, the Trump campaign and the plaintiffs, they are appealing to the uh, Third Circuit Court of Appeals. Um, and they're appealing one narrow issue. Like, they, they asked to amend their complaint again, and the district court denied them the ability to amend their complaint. Um, now, that is the one narrow issue that's being appealed to the Court of Appeals is, you know, we should have been allowed to amend our complaint. Okay, so what's going to happen? Um, I believe that the briefs um, from the Trump campaign were due Monday afternoon. Uh, I believe that the briefs from uh, the Secretary of State and the counties are due Tuesday afternoon, which hopefully will be the day that I'm posting this. And the Third Circuit will probably make their decision soon after that. But again, this is a very narrow issue. All right, so what do I think is going to happen? I mean, does it really matter what I think? Not really, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, but I could be wrong, but this is what I think. I think the Third Circuit is probably just gonna affirm the district court. Remember, it's this one really narrow issue, which is, can we amend our complaint again? And the district court denied it. That's what's going up on appeal. I think the Third Circuit's just gonna just affirm and uh, then I guess at that point, uh, the Trump campaign and plaintiffs could try to appeal to the Supreme Court. Um, will they take, will they grant review? 
I don't know. I mean, I, d I doubt it because we're still waiting to hear from the U.S. Supreme Court on the other case in Pennsylvania, which is the really good one. You know, like the one where the Pennsylvania Supreme Court stepped in and said they kind of changed the way that elections could be run over the top of what the Pennsylvania leg legislature said. According to the Constitution, clearly the elections are governed by what the legislature says, not what the courts say. I think that one's a really strong one. And we're still waiting from the U.S. Supreme Court to speak up on that one. So I really don't think, I really don't know that they're going to be granting review of this. Um, because I think they're much more likely to grant review of that other one and actually, you know, give us a ruling on that. And we're still waiting. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, tune in. I'll probably have more updates on election lawsuits.